Good evening, you're watching the News at 6 with me, Sean Russell. The News at 6 is all about the day's biggest developing stories and we'll be filling in on them over the next half hour. But first, the headlines that we're tracking right now. Prime Minister Narendra Modi lords Indian Army at Parivartan rally in Himachal Pradesh, compares surgical strikes to exploits of Israeli forces, credits NDA government with resolving one rank, one pension issue. Prime Minister Modi launches national SCST hub for micro, small and medium enterprises in Ludhiana, new centre to support entrepreneurs and strengthen market access for the community. Accompanied by Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Myanmar State Councillor and Foreign Minister Aung San Suu Kyi given ceremonial reception at Rashpati Bhavan, discusses bilateral issues with President Pranam Mukherjee. Death toll in Bhubaneswar Hospital fire goes up to 22. State government orders high-level probe into the blaze that trapped 500 indoor patients inside the building. And after securing 20 villages on the outskirts of Mosul in the first 20 hours of the 24 hours of the operation, Iraqi forces pause offensive to allow Kurdish army to consolidate their gains. Our top story this evening, Prime Minister Narendra Modi today inaugurated three hydropower projects in Himachal Pradesh. He also addressed a public rally in Mandi district of the state where he spoke on the recent surgical strikes in POK. Modi likened the Indian Army's covert operation to Israel's exploits, adding that the Indian forces have shown that they are no less than anybody. Today, हमारी सेना के पराक्रम की चर्चा हो रही है पहले कभी हम इजराइल ने ऐसा किया सुनते थे लेकिन देश ने देखा कि भारत की सेना भी किसी से कम नहीं है प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी लॉडिंग द इंडियन आर्मी एट अ ह्यूज परिवर्तन रैली इन मंडी हिमाचल प्रदेश ऑन ट्यूसडे Referring to last month's surgical strikes on terrorist bases in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir, the Prime Minister said the Army's valour is being discussed across the country these days. Modi also used the opportunity to credit his government for resolving the issue of equalising pension payouts for retired soldiers, which he said had been pending for 40 years. One rank, one pension. 40 years ago, देश के लिए मर मिटने वालों का सवाल ये सरकार है जो देश की सेना का गौरव करने वाली उस काम को पूर्ण कर दिया और आज जहां भी जाता हूं न सिर्फ फौजी लेकिन फौज के परिवार जन मुझे इतने आशीर्वाद देते हैं इतने आशीर्वाद देते हैं कि मुझे ऐसे लोगों के लिए कुछ और करने का हमेशा एक नया उत्साह मिलता है ताकत मिलती है मेरा हौसला बुलंद होता है एट द रैली मोदी आल्सो टारगेटेड द रूलिंग कांग्रेस गवर्नमेंट इन हिमाचल प्रदेश अहेड ऑफ द असेंबली पोल्स इन द स्टेट नेक्स्ट ईयर भारतीय जनता पार्टी ने मुख्यमंत्री दिए तो कोई पानी के लिए अपने आप को खपा दिया तो किसी ने सड़क के लिए खपा दिया और और भी लोग आए जिन्होंने अपने लिए न जाने क्या क्या खपा दिया द प्राइम मिनिस्टर वॉज इन द हिल स्टेट टू इनोग्रेट थ्री मेगा हाइड्रो पावर प्रोजेक्ट विद अ जनरेटिंग कैपेसिटी ऑफ वन थाउजेंड सेवन हंड्रेड एंड थर्टी टू मेगा वॉट्स द थ्री प्रोजेक्ट आर इक्विप्ड विद जनरेटिंग इक्विपमेंट सप्लाइड एंड कमीशन बाई भारत हैवी इलेक्ट्रिकल्स लिमिटेड ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट राज्यसभा टीवी now, Prime Minister Modi also today launched various schemes in Ludhiana ahead of the assembly polls in Punjab next year. They include a national SCST hub and uh, the zero defect, zero effect on environment scheme for micro, small and medium enterprises sector at the Punjab Agricultural University. Chief Minister Prakash Singh Badal and Deputy Chief Minister Sukhbir Singh Badal were present on the occasion. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday launched the national SCST hub for micro, small and medium enterprises in Ludhiana. With an initial outlay of 490 crore rupees, 
the hub will support entrepreneurs from the community. It will also strengthen market access linkage and sharing industry best practices. Modi also presented national awards to the MSME industrialists at Punjab Agriculture University. Today, I am very happy that in Ludhiana, the Lagu Udyog Kshetra, the Lagu Bharat, आज मेरे सामने भारत के आर्थिक जीवन में बदलाव लाने के लिए विकेंद्रित अर्थव्यवस्था को बल देना सूक्ष्म एवं लघु उद्योगों को ताकत देना ग्लोबल मार्केट को टारगेट करते हुए आगे बढ़ना इस सुरेश सोच के साथ भारत सरकार पूरी तरह आपके साथ खड़ी है the Prime Minister also praised the Ministry of Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises, calling it a crucial sector for economic development. Today, look at the quality of the food, look at the packaging of the food. The food has been able to compete with the corporate world in that way. It has been able to compete with the food. And one thing is true, that when the food was running for the food, the food was the most important part of the food. उस समय का मंत्र था खादी फॉर नेशन अब देश आजाद है हमें आर्थिक क्रांति की ओर जाना है और इसलिए आज का मंत्र है खादी फॉर फैशन मोदी आल्सो लॉन्च जीरो डिफेक्ट जीरो इफेक्ट ऑन एनवायरमेंट स्कीम फॉर द एमएसएमई सेक्टर द जेडीडी स्कीम वाज फर्स्ट मेंशन बाय द प्राइम मिनिस्टर इन हिज इंडिपेंडेंस डे स्पीच इन 2014 it denotes high quality manufacturing with a minimal negative impact on environment. On the occasion, the Prime Minister distributed 150 charkas to women and also tried his hand at a charka. He also visited a Khadi exhibition at Punjab Agriculture University and inaugurated a coil wreath. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Now, Pakistani troops continue to violate ceasefire along the line of control. On Monday night, uh, the Pakistani Rangers fired with small arms and shelled mortar guns on forward Indian posts in Rajouri district. A few rounds were also fired in the Nasera sector. Indian forces retaliated effectively. There were no reports of any casualty or injuries in the firing. After the army's surgical strikes in POK on September 29th, Pakistan has violated ceasefire 29 times, forcing villagers near the border to flee to safer places. Meanwhile, normal life in the valley continues to be crippled for the 102nd day amid a shutdown call given by separatists. Streets and roads were deserted. Colleges and schools have also been closed for more than three months now, derailing the academic sessions. Now, Myanmar's Aung San Suu Kyi on Tuesday received a ceremonial welcome at the Rashpati Bhavan where she was greeted by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. She also met External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj and Congress President Sonia Gandhi. Bilateral talks between Suu Kyi and Prime Minister Narendra Modi will be held on Wednesday. Myanmar's State Councillor and Foreign Minister Aung San Suu Kyi received a ceremonial welcome at the Rashtrapati Bhavan on Tuesday. She was accompanied by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Suu Kyi, who is on a three-day visit to Delhi, arrived on Monday after attending the BRICS BIMSTEC Outreach Summit in Goa. The visit looks at providing an opportunity to discuss issues of mutual interest and aims to further strengthen the close ties that exist between the two countries. And I look forward to better relations between our two countries because every time I come back to India, I realize how close we are to one another and how much I believe that our friendship will stand the test of time and circumstances. Thank you. The Myanmar leader called upon President Prada Mukherjee and discussed issues of bilateral and regional importance. Suu Kyi also met Congress President Sonia Gandhi. Both leaders discussed various steps for strengthening of Indo-Myanmar ties. This is Aung San Suu Kyi's first state visit to India after her National League for Democracy swept to power in last year's elections. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. So the Goa declaration of the BRICS summit failed to put India's concern on terrorism in a proper perspective, a fact that prompted External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj stating today that the conglomeration of Brazil, Russia, India and China and South Africa can't shy away from taking a first firm stand on this major issue. 
Without naming China, she said terrorism should not be tolerated for a narrow agenda of a few countries. After the conclusion of the BRICS and BIMSTEC summits in Goa, External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj inaugurated the BRICS Media Summit in Delhi on Tuesday. The summit will discuss the media-related issues and approaches of member countries. Swaraj dwelled on the need to sensitize media personnel on the issue of terrorism, especially in the context of Pakistan. There is a developing consensus that it cannot be business as usual. We must be prepared to extract costs for those who sponsor and support terrorists, who provide them sanctuary, and who, despite their own claimed victimhood, continue to make the false distinction between good and bad terrorists. BRICS has always been global in its approach, and today there is no longer, there is no bigger global challenge that state-sponsored and state-protected terrorism. In remarks aimed at Chinese support for Pakistan, Sushma Swaraj said Bimstek had sent out a strong signal on collaborating for development, even as it rejected Pakistan's attempt to block connectivity among member nations and cripple SARC. These are nations who are actively promoting connectivity, cooperation and context amongst themselves. Their interface with the BRICS has a message in itself. This is that a world changing in a positive direction, as reflected by the BRICS, has its regional expression in a community like BIMSTEC that is able to visualize a prosperous collective future. There cannot be a greater contrast with those who reject even trade and connectivity for political reasons. The media summit marks the end of the present series of dialogue among BRICS nations this year. On the issue of terror, the BRICS declaration named Al-Nusra, Al-Qaeda and other terrorist groups, but avoided groups like Jaish Muhammad and the Lashkar e Taiba that affect India and its neighborhood. But India's efforts at the summit indicate that the government will persist with its determination to create a consensus on both terror and its sponsors in the region. BIMSTEC countries have given very positive signal for mutual cooperation and Pakistan must learn from it. But in BRICS, China also must understand, without condemning the acts of terrorism, BRICS countries cannot achieve what they wanted to. Achilles Suman for Raj Sawa Television with camera person Junaid in Delhi. At least 22 people have been killed after a fire broke out in a hospital in Bhubaneswar in Odisha. The state government has ordered a high-level probe into it. The Prime Minister has directed officials to offer all possible help to treat the patients. In one of the worst such incidents involving hospitals in Odisha, a massive fire broke out at the Institute of Medical Sciences and some hospital on Monday evening. The fire is suspected to have been triggered by an electric short circuit in the dialysis ward on the first floor of the hospital. It then spread to the nearby ICU. More than 500 indoor patients were trapped inside the building when the fire broke out. At least seven fire tenders were pressed into service to control the blaze and over a dozen ambulances deployed to shift the critical patients to other hospitals. Many patients were rescued by breaking window panes. Many of the victims suffocated to death. Manini Mukhya Mantri ne RDC level inquiry ka order kiya hai, to RDC Central Division wo inquiry karenge. Chief Minister Naveen Patnaik described the incident as very tragic and directed government hospitals to provide necessary treatment to patients. The state government says it will review the situation and decide whether a police case needs to be registered. Uh, permission is given by the fire department, but implementation is the responsibility of the hospitals. And uh, we will now make sure that all hospitals are strictly following whatever uh, precautions have to be taken. Prime Minister Narendra Modi expressed anguish over the incident and directed officials to offer all assistance to the state. Health Minister J.P. Nadda also directed Ames Bhubaneswar to provide all necessary support. The state government says it will bear the cost of treating all the 106 patients who have been shifted to various hospitals. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Hamas rail blockades by opposition parties and farmers continued for the second day to day at various places across Tamil Nadu over the Kaveri issue. Police detained Tamil Manila Congress leader G.K. Vasan and about 300 farmers for staging protests as well. Leading an agitation of the Egbon railway station, MDMK and VCK chiefs along with several workers including those from the left parties blocked an express train. 
two senior leaders climbed onto the railing of the train's engine and shouted slogans condemning the stance of the centre against the constitution of the Kaveri Water Management Board. Similar protests witnessed huge participation of people in the Kaveri Delta region of the state, including in Tiruchirappalli and Tanjavur districts. Some more national news updates now in Nationwide. Activist Iram Sharmila on Tuesday launched a new political party called PRAJ or the People's Resurgence and Justice Alliance. She said she will contest the Manipur Assembly elections to be held early next year. Sharmila said the party would be based on the principles of justice, understanding, love and peace. She will contest two assembly seats of Thobal and Kurai. Thobal is the constituency of Manipur Chief Minister Okram Mivobi Singh. Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Akhilesh Yadav ordered a judicial probe into the Varanasi stampede that claimed 25 lives and left over 100 people injured. The one-man inquiry commission has been asked to submit its report within two months. The incident occurred on the overcrowded Raj Ghat Ganga Bridge on Saturday. Two people were killed in a fire that broke out in a residential society in Mumbai early on Tuesday morning. The incident took place on the 20th floor of the Marka Towers. Fire tenders from Kolawa rushed to the spot, rescuing two men who were trapped on the 20th floor. The fire brigade has invest initiated investigations into the cause of the fire. Members of the National Commission for Minorities have criticized the National Human Rights Commission's report on the alleged migration of several families from Kairana. Members of the minority panel said that the migration was not based on communal nature and that people of both Hindu and Muslim communities had left Kairana to pursue better business opportunities in other places. After the seven old IITs refused to add more seats to the four-year Bachelor of Technology program, citing stretched resources, second-generation IITs in Hyderabad, Mandi, Rupert, Patna and Jammu are expected to increase their undergraduate strength from next year. There are currently 23 IITs in the country. Time for us to take a short break. Lots more on the other side. Do stay tuned. How would you really convince the consumers who start comparing your government with Manmohan Singh's government when it comes to the pricing of petrol, pricing of diesel? Statistics is saying 50% of the benefit we have passed on to the consumer. I have not hide anything in parliament. The scheme talks about one gas connection per every household. The opposition, it sees it as a political strategy. Who prevented them to create this kind of welfare scheme? Is it a sin to think about poor? Watch To The Point with Petroleum Minister Dharmendra Pradhan only on Rajya Sabha Television. Welcome back. You're watching the news at 6. Some international news now. And Iraqi Kurdish forces have paused their advance towards Mosul city as they have to consolidate on the gains made on the first day against the fight in the, of the fight against the Islamic State. The armed forces said that on Tuesday they made considerable gains in the first 24 hours of the operation, capturing 20 villages in the outskirts of the city. After making considerable gains on the first day of the fight to recapture Mosul, Iraqi forces have paused their offensive for a while, following a request from the Kurdish army for more time to achieve the objectives. The pause comes after a day of intense fighting involving airstrikes, heavy artillery and a counter from the Islamic State car bombs. Armed forces closing in on Mosul said they had secured 20 villages on the outskirts of the city in the first 24 hours of the operation. The assault on the Islamic State's last stronghold is being carried out by a coalition of 30,000 Iraqi and Kurdish Peshmerga forces and Sunni tribal fighters along with air support from the US-led coalition. However, a strong resistance is expected from the 4,000 to 8,000 Islamic State fighters who have already turned to smoke shield in the hope of impairing the visibility of coalition bomber jets. Well, uh, Darlene, I'm not aware that any sort of uh, 
specific time frame has been laid out for when uh, that operation would be completed. Obviously, this represents uh, the next important step uh, in our campaigns or our campaign against ISIL in Iraq. The United States has mobilized a 67-member coalition to support the Iraqi government and Iraqi security forces as they seek to rid ISIL from their country. But the biggest concern of the battle remains the civilians trapped in the area. The Islamic State has resorted to using civilians as human shield before and could do it again. Our concern is that civilians um, are at extreme risk from crossfire, from possible artillery barrage. We understand that ISIL has booby-trapped large parts of the city. We understand that there's extensive contamination by explosive hazards. We're very worried about snipers. The start of the offensive on Mosul was announced by Iraqi Prime Minister Haider al-Abadi before dawn on Monday. The fall of Iraq's second largest city, two years after being captured, would effectively signal the defeat of the Islamic State in Iraq. Bureau report, Rajya Sabhati. Now, Russian and Syrian warplanes on Tuesday halted their airstrikes on Aleppo in preparation for a temporary truce that Moscow has announced for later in the week. Moscow's announcement for a humanitarian pause between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. on Thursday is to allow civilians and militants safe passage out of the city. Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoyu said that Holton strikes could also pave the way for terrorists to leave the rebel-held parts of the city. Syrian rebels, including al-Qaeda terrorists, as well as the wounded and the sick, will be allowed to leave to the neighboring, country, neighboring province of Idlib. Meanwhile, the European Union has called for an immediate ceasefire in Aleppo, voicing strong concerns about the humanitarian situation in the Syrian town. The bloc has condemned uh, Russia's air campaign in Syria, saying it may be guilty of war crimes and that it vowed to impose more sanction on President Bashar al-Assad's government. The I insisted on the fact that the issue of Aleppo is vital, is crucial. Any discussion that forgets the fact that between now and December, if we are not finding a solution for Aleppo, Aleppo will be not there anymore. Some more international news now in Global Buzz. WikiLeaks today claimed that its founder Julian Assange's internet connection was shut down by the government of Ecuador, deflecting blame from the US or British governments that have sparred with Assange for releasing sensitive material. WikiLeaks said Assange lost internet connectivity on Sunday night. Meanwhile, the group tweeted that it had activated appropriate contingency plans. An army spokesperson on Monday said that at least 56 rebels were killed over the weekend as heavy clashes erupted in South Sudan. Sudan People's Liberation Army spokesperson said that accused forces aligned with former Vice President Riek Mashar of attacking government troops near the city of Malakal. Hundreds of students took to the streets of Rio de Janeiro to protest a constitutional amendment known as the PEC 241 that would reduce public spending in the struggling economy. The protest comes as Brazil seeks to pull out of its worst recession on record and to control a fiscal deficit of more than 10% of GDP. A panel of judges presiding over the Denpasar District Court have delayed making their decision on the case involving an Australian man accused of molesting uh, 11 young girls in Bali. The court was supposed to come to a verdict today for 70-year-old Robert Andrew Fidis Ellis. The Verdict hearing is now due to take place on 25th October. Australia has rejected a human rights uh, report comparing its asylum seeker camp on the Pacific island of Nauru to an open air prison. In a report, Amnesty International alleged that this was a deliberate policy to inflict harm on refugees and imposes conditions that amount to torture. Some spots now and the Supreme Court has dismissed a review petition filed by the BCCI to look into the verdict passed by the court in the Lodha panel logjam. The cricket board has asked the court to consider a review of the verdict where the court had accepted the Lodha panel recommendations consisting a wide range of suggestions for the board to implement. Of the more important reforms are one, sta uh, one state, one vote, 
one person, one post and 70 uh, age limit for office bearers. However, BCCI has been reluctant to implement these reforms since the verdict was passed in July. In a hearing on Monday, the court had decided to reconsider imposing monetary sanctions of the BCCI until it implements the reforms. But the court reserved its orders on several other issues. The court has already barred the BCCI from handling funds to state associations with some state bodies also being disallowed from using these funds. It's a setback to, uh, uh, to, the, to the BCCI. Uh, but we will have to wait for the uh, final judgment of the Supreme Court to come. Um, I don't blame the BCCI uh, for uh, the uh, um, for the review petition because ultimately the BCCI uh, is a body which consists of all the associations and most of the associations they all have separate constitution. Some more sports action now in sports beat. Indian shuttler Saina Nehwal was appointed a member of the International Olympic Committee's Athletes Commission. In a rare honour for an Indian sportsperson, Saina received a letter from the, uh, to the effect from IOC President Thomas Bach. The Athletes Commission is directed by Angela Ruggiero and comprises nine vice presidents and ten other members. Liverpool and Manchester United played out an uneventful goalless draw at Anfield. A strong defensive display from United prevented Liverpool from a fifth successive Premier League victory. After the draw, Liverpool are fourth in the table with 17 points, while United are seventh with 14 points. Pakistan clinched a thrilling 56-round win over West Indies in the day-night test in Dubai. Chasing a total of 346 in the final day, the West Indies side was spurred on by Darren Bravo's 249 ball 116, but it proved to be insufficient as Pakistan wrapped up victory with 12 overs to spare. Azhar Ali was a judge from the man of the match for his triple ton in the first innings. That's all from us. Goodbye.